nine six feet plus month to month. Um, we have Randy, we have Victor, we have Shane, and we have Mitch. Welcome. And who do we have on the Zoom? Any, uh, Just Orca. Just Orca? Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see what's in there. If anyone else zoomed in, will you let me know? You yes. Know, or somebody let me know? Just if nothing, if nothing else? Yeah. Okay. So, first up on the agenda. Peter, we have an amendment, remember? Oh, amendment. Yes. We have an amendment. In the, uh, in the other business, well, so, we need to talk about brush cutting on class four roads involving a certain select board member who wasn't here. But uh, I'm going to say while we have the gentleman from the road crew here, we should discuss that at the end of their update, if that's okay with everybody, rather than keep them here until the bitter end, which I'm sure they would not. Sure. Yeah. 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 So Liz, Liz would like to talk about overtime for one member of the road crew. Do you remember where you're talking about? Okay. At the, uh, at the greater presentation. So we'll talk about that also. Okay. We're changing the dates. Right. Well, you, you can stick up. Okay. But I thought we could do this at the end. No, we're going to do it at the end of the, the road okay. gentleman is still here. Okay. So highway department update. Up. Sure. So wait for the excavator to get fixed to uh, get back on the road hopefully by the end of this week so we can move it to Bulldog Road and start that. Yeah. Done what? Four, almost four miles of ditching so far this summer. Yep. Yeah. Everything's hard to see this. 400 feet of culverts in. So it's been busy. Yeah. But no, be nice to stop grading grade a little bit. We've been grading here and there when it says we're not going to get rain, then it rains. So, right. Yeah, right. We apologize, Liz, uh, for doing Thank how it looks. No, they only did the flat today. So that was really rough. Yeah. Uh, did you say you do Dolan this morning? Yeah, Dolan yeah. was washing out. And it was yeah, like this in the middle. So, we had to do them. I mean, the one thing I would say when you can, and I don't think it's an emergency, but you all that beautiful ditching along these hills, but the way the road is made, the water runs right down the road and washes, it doesn't go into yeah, the Yeah, we're bed. hoping between tomorrow afternoon and yeah. Thursday, maybe. Yeah. It just kind of, kind of defeats the purpose of those beautiful ditches yeah, that the water yes. doesn't run into. Yeah, we got it. There's a little bit of grading and some resurfacing that needs to be done. The only other. Uh, the only other thing I have, and I mean, you may have some more stuff, um, is just put it right out of my head. It must have been important. No. Go right ahead. I'm sure it'll come back. Um, no, I mean, it's all an update on the road for now. The walk and roll and the plow pitch for the grader should be here should be in Williston by the end of this week. And then they're gonna call me by the end of this week, to set up a time to go from now and put them on. How busy the deal is to put them on one day? Yeah. yeah. What was the price again on the roller? 35,000. Mm -hmm. yep. I told my kids it was 5,000. We're like, wow, that's really cheap. No, that said, but I'll ask. The plow you can't, can't buy it for 5,000. <laughs> You can't buy a better driver's seat for plus enough. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll correct that yeah. at dinner tonight. Thirty-five thousand. Yeah. What you really want to talk about? Is, uh, yeah, uniforms. We want yep. to talk about uniforms. Yep. Um, I just think that the My town wants to save money, so we really ought to think about switching. I mean, universe is charging a lot of money. Right now, as it stands. We're paying $5,600 a year just shy of for uniforms. Without Charles and I don't have full uniforms yet. I still don't have all my pants. Charles doesn't get shirts because they won't get them the right size. And if you add them both together, it's $7,200. We pay through Unifirst. And then the rags we get for cleaning up grease,
streets and messes is another uh, 1338 bringing it to $8,500 we paid for university. Is that clean? That's cleaning too? Yeah. And we can go through Foley's with full uniforms and rags for $2,800 a year. I mean, that's $5,700 difference. And we opt out now. There's supposedly a penalty. I think we'd get out of it. But if you couldn't, you'd be paying about, it's half of the previous 26 weeks when you tell them you're done. So I figured it out at $1,800 roughly, it would be give or take, depending on. So, so am, I, am I wrong that we were thinking that their contract expired this fall, but it actually runs for another it, year? It runs till next fall. Yeah. Now, the guy tried to get me um, on a new contract, a three-year contract, he said, because if you look at the invoices, they're charging a PEFP charge. They give you two separate invoices, a rag invoice and uniform invoice. And I called back in January and complained about that. And they said, well, we can get you on one, uh, one invoice, but you have to do a new contract. And I'm like, so they're charging us $26 on one invoice. Pretty much uh, that DESE yes, charge is a stop Say no charge. more. Yeah. Say no more. So, I mean, we want, we want to spike them. We, we wanted to spike them before. So if it makes economic sense to do it, even if we have to pay the $1,800 penalty. But yeah. I thought it was they had to, we had to pay the balance of the contract or something. No, it says right on that, in the back of that, I think she has it's a copy a 50%. It. It's 50%. It's 50% of the previous 26 weeks. So okay. it would be $2,400 to stop it. Um, I want to throw a couple things in here. You're including, when you're giving these numbers, the depth charge, the garment maintenance, the garment setup, and the garment emblem. And I'm not saying we shouldn't change. I just think we need to, before we enter into anything, we should, there's $40, almost $41 worth of charges that are not the uniform charges. My first question is, I'm assuming we're still gonna have some of these charges with Foley. So I, I think we should definitely, oh, just make sure. because we're paying $22.93 for, a full set of uniforms. We are paying for shirts for Pelcher, for three of them. We're paying for two jackets for Pelcher, and we're paying for 11 shirts for you and four pairs of jeans for you and a couple of jackets. But I do think before you do it, we should stop and really get all the charges in there to make sure we know what we're entering into. They're right here. Okay. Garment program is three dollars and six cents. Okay. And the fuel environmental fee is three seventy and four sixty. Three seventy. So the fifty four a week for them to come do uniforms, and they have a five year contract too. But with Unifirst, if you don't catch it and forget about the contract, if you look at the fine print, it's supposed to renew itself and just keep rolling over. Yeah. Um, with the Foley, it does not. And I contacted Sintas and he wanted to know what we were paying before you give me a price. And I said, of course no, he did. No, I'm not right. doing that. You give me what you can do. And he said, no. Well, tell me your price. So is that for four full sets of uniforms? Yeah, four full sets. Everyone has complete uniforms. Winter jackets? Yep. Is there it's one short, one long. Okay. Is there changing out between summer uniforms and winter uniforms? I haven't seen that yet here. No, it's not. That's oh, why no. it's a question. No, no. I, I thought when I first started, they said they switched out. Okay. No, because it's jackets, we've been but... buying t-shirts. So right. the question becomes, do we then eliminate t-shirts or will we still have t-shirt expenses? So that was kind of where my question is. I think I don't have any t-shirts. I bought my own. But I think if you want to go to the safety t-shirts, we should still buy the t-shirts. Because the other shirts are long sleeve shirts. Yeah, I know. Um, you can get yeah. short sleeve shirts. I mean, we did in Marshfield. I mean, but the guys like the long sleeve in the winter. So I know your father got some kind of t shirt and had them screen printed with. And we can um, do that through Bevins if you guys want. Yeah, he so did them through the Deerfield. How do, we get them, how do we get them clean? Yeah. You guys have clean the piece and pick it. You guys wash the t shirt yourself. Yeah, they take them home. I, I wash my own uniform myself. So is Charlie. Bruce is pretty much the only one that brings his back. Okay. Right now. 
down. Yeah. I mean, the other option you can have is you can do like Worcester does. They, they bought their guys, say, seven sets of pants, two jackets, so many shirts, so many t shirts. So they might have paid six, eight hundred dollars a year, and they or every two years they said they would update their uniforms. They had them embroidered by somebody. So I mean that you can look at that option too if you wanted to. Uh, they clean them themselves, and the town gives them a cleaning fee, pays them X amount of dollars. So yeah, I'm all for I'm all for going with Foley, but I agree with Dorinda. I think we need to. Uh... I'll call Mark tomorrow and have him bring a contract and double jet, but everything's right here in the trophy he gave me. I mean, that's a huge difference. When they're charging 2293 a set and they're going to do all four sets for that same price, it's like pretty that's not amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm wondering. No, is it really? Wow. $10.56 for 33 pants on one line and four dollars and eighteen cents for eleven on a different line because some of them want wow. cargoes, some of us want jeans. That's amazing. Um, Forty four work shirts, fourteen dollars. I just want to ask you a minute. That fifty you keep calling a depth charge or something a fifty four oh eight that is that to deliver uniforms every other week or is that that's every week. Every week to fifty four oh eight to deliver uniforms every week. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So but I can double check with Mark tomorrow and have him bring a contract so we can look at it before we change. Um, is it worth talking to the other place that we do it with and say, what gives, why are they so much cheaper? I've talked to Bob. I know one of the head guys down in White River or West Lebanon, and he the cheapest that they would come down to was 100 bucks. He yeah. said, well, I don't know how they can do it that cheap. Mm -hmm. They're miserable to deal with, to be honest with you. That's why Marshfield got rid of them years ago because yeah. their price kept going up. Now, when I was with Marshfield, they were getting uniforms and the town clerk was getting two rugs for $39 a week. And that includes, that also includes the rags. Who knows? Maybe they don't give their employees benefits or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what I, what I would suggest is, is we move to make the change subject to Dorinda's final approval and sign off so that work for you during that yeah i mean i i don't i don't feel as though i need to approve it i just wanted to be able to give you a fair comparison right. i mean no, that's I just, your choice sure, and just it just seems sure like a huge that you're comfortable with the same yeah and, and, and then my second question would be you know from what i've heard through the grapevine that you know people have not paid that um the when they charge you the 50%, the cancellation, they've just walked away from it. So the question would become, you know, do, you do we walk away not? for it or do you want to pay? I mean, with Cabot, and from what I hear, of course, this is hearsay, who knows if it's accurate 100%, but Cabot left them and the lawyer said, bring us to court and the university dropped it. Because they didn't have a leg well, stand on it. I would suggest we take the second approach. We've okay. given we've given them every opportunity to be competitive, do better. They've always pushed back and said, "This is all we can do." They can't get you the proper. You know, I mean, it's just we're we're no, fighting no, no. with them right now over a hundred and some dollar charge. Yeah, I they think said for that a, I own four pair yeah. of pants. Well, I only got four pair in the beginning. They had another four pair. They were ripped, and I said no. Yeah. And I gave them to the guy and sent them back. And then they said Paul had pants that were missing. Well, Jay yeah. found them in his closet, mixed with his. So he brought them back three months ago when I told the guy, this is the old road foreman. You guys are trying to charge us for, you need to bring it back. And he said, okay. And we had the same thing when, I don't remember the last road crew, not Paul, but um, I can't remember who the last one. They charged us for all kinds of uniforms that they said were never turned in. And it becomes their driver's word against our word. And of course they're going with what their driver is saying. I think for all the reasons, I mean, we've, we've crashed this over a number of times over the last year. We've always concluded the same thing. We just yep. have some change. Yep. We just have to figure out when's the right time to do it. All so, right, well, I can double so check how the long, how long does it take them to get all the uniforms embroidered and set up and ready to go? We he, say, he we said say he'd go. have them 
they just set up evidently they took out. I asked him that today how long because I want to know availability because that's what Unifers is claiming they can't get these genes because they come from Tennessee or something because of trucking. So I asked him the same question and they had they have a bunch of tire places they just took on two weeks, fully uniform, everything once we told them they're going to you. So he said give it three just to make sure, but yeah. So when we pull the plug, we should say effective such and such a day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That'd be the best. Yep, yep, yep. So is someone willing to make that motion? Okay, I thought you did make a motion. Oh, well, I can't. Me? Yeah. No, I don't make motions. He doesn't make motions. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> only, under, only under extreme circumstances. Okay. <laughs> I move we terminate um, our contract with Unifirst and switch to Foley's to provide one true uniform um, with an effective date. Um, to be determined. To be determined. So after after Dorinda's financial review. After the Dorinda, after the town treasurer's um, review. Perfect. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Yeah, I second. Okay. Thank you. Um, Hi, Shane. I'm Mary Stanley. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. All in, uh, person. I all in favor it. of the motion, which is good motion and second, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Done. I was a P Danes for so everybody has supposed to understand that's why I was late. <laughs> so um, doesn't know you. make it happen as I said. Okay. Can I ask a couple of quick questions? Oh. Shane, uh, why doesn't uh, Charles Pelcher like the uniforms? And if he doesn't, they don't fit him. He's told them and told them and told them since he's been here. This is the story I'm getting. He's got three shirts that fit him. He doesn't wear them very often. He needs a tall shirt, and he's been arguing with the guys, and they bring back the same uniform he has. They oh, don't so fit he him. might like the uh, Foley shirts. They Hopefully, get they get them the right size. Okay, gotcha. What's he wearing in the meantime? He wears, he has a t-shirts and his hoodie he wears when it's cold and the orange ones we supply over a jacket. Can I ask one more question? Yes, ma'am. What, what have we, what have we been doing? Because um, we wanted to have short sleeve shirts for the guys at uh, Unifirst and um, they said they couldn't provide them. And so in the summer, the guys can wear t-shirts. Is that what they're doing now? Wearing t-shirts instead of- During the summer, yes. And they have- Posted, we'd be having ones that have down metal set on. And did we order those? Okay. I don't think we have any new ones yet. Because I mean, I know people saw that those were the ones they thought that the beer was not going to the beer from those so grocery stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought we bought them last summer. Okay. We just probably haven't bought new ones this year. Yeah. Okay. But well, I just wanted to, I'm, I'm just kind of picking the parts of my brain and had outstanding issues to fit at uniforms. But we should wait and see what Foley. Right. We'll it, so you can get short sleeve shirts in there because that's what we had in our shirt. Oh, oh yeah. really? So they would, have would they wear those over the t shirt or not? Yeah. They might, or maybe you can get half and half. Yeah. 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 I can ask them that too if we'll split them up. Great. Thank you. You're well, just, let's just make sure the savings is really there. Right. Just, yeah, that's incredible. Fun, all of a sudden, find out exactly what Dorinda was talking about. And Although, although I would say, them, I think anyway, they're being just yeah. on that. they have a reputation of being so much better to deal with. But anyway, yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. Half, I mean, you're paying half of one set for all the sets, <laughs> which we always um, thought it was too high. Yeah. Anyway, um, so now I remember the other thing I wanted to talk about, which was uh, greater training. Where do, we, where do we stand on that? And I understand the boys don't think they want it or need it. Well, Charles and I did it. We did the we did, school, the we did the class on the Oh, we did. Yeah. But we haven't, we haven't, we got until August 30th to sign up it's on a first come, first serve basis to get Stu Johnson, the state greater operator. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. And so what you're talking up. about is uh, Jay didn't want to do it. You know what? Do you want to do it? 
I, I at one time you're sure it'd be interesting because you'll come out right right it comes right out but we well, got to do it before the 30th of august because that's when it gets done yeah yeah, yeah we just have to we just have to uh if we can't get it, if we can't get it, we can't get it. But but, but I don't care. Do I don't care whether Jay wants to do it or not. As far as I'm concerned, we tell him you're doing it, and he could be yeah, happy and scouting the market. And he's going to do it. Yes, so he'll do it at Stu Gump. We have Stu Gump. I'm sure he'll do it. I mean, anything we can get, especially when it's free, that teaches us how to use that machine better. Right. Oh my God. He said, I guess he has done it before. Yeah, he he's said taken, he gave all the stuff to yeah, Charles. He, yeah, he did. He brought all the books in because he's taken school class before. So, but this this machine is, is different though, because of the joystick. It's right? because it's joystick, but he's gotten pretty good with it real quick. I was pretty good. impressed. He's good. doing a decent job with it. So good. It seems to be Two Johns and he works for the Mount Local Bronze. Oh, oh yeah. He's the guy that does yeah. the greater All right. Thanks. Yeah. So if we can get them, let's get them. Okay. I have a couple of real quick questions. Has the screener come yet? Because I'll see. It'll got be that. here on he called me or emailed me yesterday with the W9 stuff and said it was being loaded then. It would be here by the end of the week. Then. What, so just let me, because I've got the check, but I'm not going to mail it I until told we him have we it. Mail it okay. We saw it and looked at it. Okay. And the, awesome. And the other thing, I'm holding the check for Lafayette. Is there any resolution on that? Um, we're going to have to pay them at least that money. I mean, they just went, that's all done. It's all moved. They moved it uh, yesterday to where it was supposed to be in initially. Now it's a lot of confusion and confliction now. I haven't heard back from Jim Cota yet because I asked him because Jamie called the one that installed it, called the state, like the thing said to do. And he said, well, you're supposed to come out in person, but he said, you guys know what you're doing. He said, well, we want to move it in into the 50 a little ways because of the signage. And the guy told him to go ahead and do it. And then supposedly someone turned us in. So I don't know who or what. And they said because it was in the 50, it had to go back to the 35, or we had to go through the board process and pay for it to get the speed limit moved out there. And it was going to be uh, so why can't you? I, I mean, it makes no sense to me. You know, when I've, I've been, as I drive around studying at these different towns, post speed changes and where they put up, that seems to be all over the place. It does. I agree. It's not like there's any consistent. I'm sorry, what? Maybe no one's talked with other towns or hasn't turned them in like uh, they did in our town. I, I, think, I think somebody, it's the old Vermont Bank, one person made a complaint yeah. and then it got run out the ladder and all of a sudden it's a problem. If nobody gripes, exactly. probably yes. nothing happened. Because with the white strobes, if you go up Route 2 through Concord, Vermont right now, their feedback signs have white strobes on them. And they have for a few years. So evidently no one drives up that way from the state. Again, my position is that there may be extenuating circumstances. Honest to God, I don't care. It's right. their job, their job to get together with the state and put it in the right place. And however right. it happened, they didn't do it. So I'm I'm fine paying for the original bill to do it, but I don't want to pay for moving it. So if right. they if they say, you know, we moved it at our expense, then you should release the check to rent it. But until they do that, I don't want Continue to, to hold the check. Okay. okay. Does that makes sense too. Yeah. yeah. Other yeah. board members? Yeah. 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 The only other thing is we'll skip that. The, 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 the sign on the north end. No, nope, we changed it this afternoon. We did. I called Jamie and asked him because I called Brent and asked him why the signs weren't put on the post because it's in the permit that they're supposed to do that. And Brent said, yes, they will do it. And they did one yesterday, but not the other one. So it got done this afternoon. I went and checked and they were doing it then. So they will be like they're supposed to be. And I emailed, called Kristen and left her a message because she's the one, um, according to Jim, that we have to please and make happy. So she's the one that's authorized where they were to be put in the first place. So, yeah. so can I just ask a question for clarification? Do you think the check should be paid or should not be paid? Should not be paid until they agree to pay the cost of moving. Until they would agree to pay the cost of moving. Yeah. 
And if they refuse to waive the cost, then we'll try and bargain with them, or I don't know what we'll do, but let's hope they waive it. They should waive it, mind you. So. Well, they're the ones who put it in the wrong place. What? They're the ones who put it in the wrong Correct. place. Correct. Now, you know, whether they were told to do it or whether somebody said it was okay to do it, I don't care. Came back and it was in the wrong place. So, um, another issue is, and uh, I left you a message, Victor, I don't know if you got my message this afternoon. Um, Mary's been trying to get a hold of you about um, brush cutting on. We, we connected yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. So well, you're all set. Good two hours, aren't we, Mary? It wasn't that long. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Victor did most of the talk. Okay. <laughs> so what what it did cause me to do is read over our town of Middlesex class four roads and trails policy. Mm -hmm. and the steps that we missed in doing this is we agreed when we adopted that policy to notify abutting landowners when we gave permission for a brush cutting. Mm -hmm. So we didn't do that. So we need to be careful in the future to let Sarah know so she can uh, notify. I presume, Mary, you're willing to waive that notice at this point in time. You've been noticed. <laughs> As they say. Well, I was noticed when they appeared on my property. No, I understand. I'm, I, don't, I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be snarky. I'm just saying we don't need at this point in time to send you notice, right? You've met with Victor and you're. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. When I read that class four policy, it made it sound like the landowner goes to the road commissioner. The road commissioner gives permission. The road commissioner then comes to the next select board meeting and says, "This is what's happening." We put it in the minutes, but that so far has not happened yet. Yeah. So and we then do that. the town of that. clerk, and the way just let me sure I get the order right. And then the town clerk notifies the, the abutters that this is what's happening. Is that is that your reading of the of the hospital policy? Are you asking me? I'm asking the board. Well, I, know yeah, yeah, the I, I read it, I read it uh yes. Okay, so we also should get something in the minutes of what's going on. So otherwise I didn't know there's been no actual discussion of what's right. happening. So Vic should say what happened. What permission was given? Um, it, uh, to who? We should, we're, we're, we're to the person who says, wanted to, to cut the brush or cut the trees or do whatever. What were they given permission to do? Cut on the class three section, not on the class four. Section. No, that was yeah. the class four too. No. Never said anything about that. That was never mentioned. So if you want to follow him, go ahead. They, uh, I thought that was all part of that. Uh, you remember the permit? And the, you know, we had a couple of select boards said no. There was a permit. There was a permit, and, and uh, WEC was going to cut it and all that stuff. So yeah. Uh, so I thought my understanding from Mary was that the landowner was cutting on the class four section. The landowner was not me. It was someone else who is uh, a butt of tail end of my property that was putting on my property um, without not. And Vic told me that the permit that was granted to WEC didn't. He could do it on the. Someone told me that he was given permission under the permit. And I think it was the other landowner. Are you saying me? I, no, I think that Mark told me that he was given permission by you under the permit for the class four section. Well, that's a bald faced lie. I'm, I'm just trying to recollect who told me I did what. not say that. And, I, and Shane knows because I, I went with Shane and uh, it was quite a while ago. And he called up, but he, Mark Hannon, called me and said, uh, wanted to know that if. Uh, he could. Uh, he wanted us to cut the trees on the class three section in front of Mary's. He was very nervous about Mary, and so, so. Uh, I only met the man once. <laughs> no, that's one more time than I have. And, but anyways, so it was on the class three section. So I, I, I told him that we did not have the whereabouts to do it. I checked with Shane. I said. You know, do we have funds and do we have time to do it? We're pretty busy. 
and I called Gary, or had Gary, had him call Gary, and Gary told him that there wasn't any issue with the tree warden. Yeah. And so we're, so it's on, it's the, what we were talking about, what was in my mind is the class three section where the canopy comes over. Yeah. And he had to get his, he's moving the house in. He says it's 14 feet high. I think it has to be because I don't, I don't think you can go over 14 feet, 14, three, something like that. Sometimes it's 13, six to get the permit to go through with the house. And he wanted to cut those out. Cut the branches. Yeah. The branches. He did not yeah. cut a tree. I don't believe he cut a tree in that class three section. Not he anyone. Cut huh? He cut branches. He cut branches. And I mean, he did a pretty nice job. I mean, I looked at it yesterday. And, you know, it, it, I don't, it, it still looks the same I shape. I don't understand the problem. I, I'm, I'm the problem is well. he's, bringing his, he's bringing his house in on a truck. Yeah. And the branches are over the road. No, I understand that. But what is the, why are we talking about this? What because is the Mary's problem? upset. <laughs> okay. And Mary is the landowner who said someone was on her property cutting the trees. There's no seat. notice coming from it. From anybody, but is it really your property when it's on a right of way for the town? On a well, it's my property since there's an easement for the town. I just wondered about the process. The process is that somebody shows up who's not even living anywhere near and starts cutting a loop. Okay, right I thought that you could, even though it was like my property, if it's on the town right of way, they can just do without whatever they want without. Who's but the, but who's who's the they and what's the notice? That was my question. So normally. On the crest three section would be us, right? Right, normally be us, town. right? Or so we, we hired the class in, three in road. McCullough Hill Road. They hired that crew that came from. Uh, I don't know if we paid for it. If Washington Electric paid for it, who paid for it? But they 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 uh, engaged that crew from Hardwick to cut on McCullough Hill Road. So I was only one from uh, past experience. They just did it. Well, and uh, Green Mountain Power had that crew that did all along. Uh, all along East Hill, um, mostly around their power lines, but a lot of their power lines are in our right of way. So, is there I, something that we need to change on this? I don't think so. What's that? There's nothing we need to change on this. No, we just need to follow it. Okay, um, that's why I'm really confused because it doesn't seem to me so there's any class four issue here. The only class four issue is apparently Mark is his name. Yeah was cutting on the class four section and Victor is saying that he didn't have permission to cut on the class four section. But how did they get that all through? Washington Electric's the one that cut it. No, he so they came, were, in, no, he came cutting, in and it's it recently. Work. We're not talking about when Washington Electric put their power line in. We're talking, I, I thought, Mary, you said they were doing it just last week. And it was from right. on the class three from, from Right, but I'm saying he was cutting on the class four too, Victor, is what I'm saying. Just a small I am cutting. not aware of that. Okay. So we're talking, he did two cuttings, the cutting on the class well, he three. He did it all at once, but it was and a then small he also section. Cut class four. I mean, so he didn't go down all the way to his property. He did it on a small section of four. So and did I he have a tree company do it? Who, who actually did it? He didn't do it himself? No, no, he hired these guys without, elect, without chainsaws. They did it all with clippers and everything. And yeah. they picked it up and they swept the road. And they made it all clean. I mean, if you went up to Mary's, I mean, I, I uh, if you went up there and looked down from uh, the road, from the center road towards Mary's house, it, I could not tell you that it really looks a heck of a lot of difference. It's not like they went. I, I, all I'm saying is, I didn't get any notice from anybody. I, was kind of I mean, how do you think he was going to? You've been in controversy with this man for for years, months. No, that's not true. It is true. And Washington Electric, we had a meeting about that. You know that he was putting power in. I mean, what do you think he was going to fly that house in? I mean, what were you thinking? I mean, I'm you don't have to have notification on a Class Three road. It's it's our right of way. I'm talking, I don't think I'm entitled to notice of the town. I think I'm entitled to notice of someone else privately. And, you know, in, in all fairness, you know, you were very teary eyed. You got all busted up, crying. You were worried about your trees. As a human being, 
even though I don't think I did anything wrong, I did out of compassion for you, walked up to you, shook your hand and said, Mary, I am really, really sorry that you had so much, you were, you felt so bad about that. I had no idea. And I'm sorry about that. Part. And you said, okay, but is there ever an end? Is there ever an end? I no. didn't bring this up. Somebody did. Yeah, I don't know. Who brought it up? We amended the agenda. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Well, are we are we are we good for that? I'm good. Yeah. Mary, you're okay. Yeah, but what is the? It's it's going to continue this way. That's all. Not me, but just in general. Well, in the class three sections, it's the town routinely does that, and I'm not aware that we ever give anybody notice. Even if somebody else cuts it, I mean, this guy was the owner, the person who hired him was personally pointing out the three cuts. Is that what we're going to allow? Well, I'll, uh, I try to give people notice. Even when we did East Hill, we cut some trees on, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. Uh, yeah, a bunch of the trees were on his land. I mean, they're growing in town right away. He's got some big old maples, and I said, we're going to be ditching up through here. He said, I could cut every tree I wanted. He just asked, please, we didn't hurt the roots of those big old maples. And I said, fine, we did it. And he was all right with it. And it looked good afterwards. Something like that around <laughs> people's property, I try to at least let them know or ask them if it's all right. I mean, apple trees, you're technically supposed to ask to cut them or get permission to cut them or have them cut them. But I, I, I try to give people notice when I'm doing the cutting. No, so and, that's, at least and, that's, and that's great. But, but the question is, the, the practical matter is, we do not have to give Notice. No, you don't have class three roads. Now, so courtesy is it nice to let people know what's going on? I agree, but I am reluctant to make it our policy that we promise that we're going to give everybody notice on class three roads. No. Well, and I think all Mary's asking is the class four. If part. there's other, well, not the class four part, but like if there's, if we are not able to do it, oh, we're going to have somebody and we're else okay to with someone else doing it. One is that that it sounds like that happens once in a while, right? Like when you have to contract it out because you don't have the time to right. do it. That's not an unusual thing. But I would say that as long as there's been some conversation about where the tree is being cut or which area is being dealt with, that you assume that that company who's doing it knows what they're doing and shouldn't have a townsperson standing there saying, "Oh, it's got to be that tree and that tree only." They didn't. Right. They, they didn't. I mean. It's like coming up uh, East Hill. We hired do boys. And if you look at it down there, they crushed a lot of trees. Now, Shane said he was going to go back and cut them. I could have do. Does he have to? I don't know. But I'm not saying that. That's and we weren't going to do it at all because we didn't have the time and we didn't think it was necessary. But this homeowner had to have it done. So the responsibility was on them to pay for it. And that's how right. that worked out. Yes. Right. I mean, yeah, I would say those things aren't going to happen every day, and that you wouldn't necessarily have to tell the landowner if it's in your town right away. As long as that conversation was had with you guys, he didn't just go and do it. That's not the issue, right? He right. talked to you. He talked to me and he talked right. he talked to the to the to the uh tree board. Yeah. Well, so. and this was this event that just happened was basically getting branches on trees and probably that's also a good thing to do because it's a snowstorm so the branches are going to ice storm so the branches are going to come down. And, so, and in all fairness, I had no idea he was going to do it that day either. I didn't know he was going to do it Friday. Whenever was it Friday? I had no idea. Right. They told me. Right. Well, I think we're good. Can I ask a real quick question? I don't want to Drag this out any longer, yes. but it happens that I talked to somebody from the state E911 board about Leland Farm Road, also unrelated to this issue. But he mentioned to me that he had seen two different maps that indicated that the class three, class four section is two different places. You know, if the town knows exactly where the class three road ends and the class four road starts, they're out there now. Official highway map. Okay. 
the E911 said they would. It's easier to tell. He had seen two different maps that indicated one said it was just past 65, and I don't remember the other address. I wrote it down at home, but I don't have a way. There's a BAOT has an official map that we do print out every year. Right. That's where right. that delineates where that is. That's okay. kind of what it is. All right, then. Right. Okay, we're, we're right. running. Okay, can I just yep. quickly talk about the. Are we done with it? Yes. Go okay. ahead. Can I talk about the greater uh, field term? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in contact with. Uh, I know, except right. we have to change the date because she didn't yeah, realize I'm going to be out of town. Okay, and good. Are you okay with that? Decided. Okay. And so the only question I had was is in to avoid overtime if possible, does does Shane have the ability to well Shane, do you have the ability to do something like leave early on Thursday because you stayed late on Wednesday? Yeah, that does that work for your yeah. crew? Like are would they would they be able to get their work done when you're not there? Would they all be like, oh the boss is done, yeehaw? Yeah, I can keep you busy. Okay, um, because that would be preferable to paying overtime for this thing if that works for you and you're okay with that. That'd be fine. Okay. Um, so the date is going to be um, August 4th, yet with a rain date of um, the next Wednesday. Okay. Um, and we'll do it, I think, did she say? So the concert starts at six, is that correct? He'll be there. I think it's six thirty or six thirty. Yeah. He'll so, be there from he gets done at four thirty. Okay. And he'll be there at six thirty. Okay, perfect. So we'll figure out whether it starts at four thirty or five. Probably it starts at five if the concert starts at six thirty. Sure. Um, that's what, that's and then what she said. okay, she said five. Okay, good. And um and then Susan will be responsible for advertising the kids. And I think the one thing we wanted to just double check was, would children be able to sit on the grader? Not riding it, but sit on it. Like, That's is there up any to insurance? the select board in the town. You guys have checked into that. Yeah. Our insurance will cover that. Our insurance will cover that. Yeah, yeah as long as you're not just letting them run willy-nilly. No, long as they're supervised. Wanted, my no, sons have already yeah. asked to take me on it, and they're 18 and 20. So can they? Yeah. <laughs> They're not children. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I want to stay on. Okay. Now, are you, Liz? You can go down there any time and sit on. Uh, well, I'm definitely coming through this. And I saw it in action today. But are you going to go on the garage tour? Okay. Yes, we're going to do a garage tour as well. Right. So, someone just to show the trucks and the years of the trucks and stuff like that. So, all right. Thank you so much. Okay. So, we're running behind. And Victor will be there okay. too. Can you be quick? Oh, yeah. Okay. Go. So, okay. Um, Town Energy Fair is considering slash planning to hold an energy fair. Prospective tentative date is September 18th. Um, and in conjunction with this, I was asked if I'd be interested in resurrecting the old corn roast in some fashion. It won't be as fancy as it used to be, but I thought, hey, yeah. I actually was thinking about that before the pandemic hit and put the kibosh on that anyway. So, um, but I thought I should at least talk to a select board and say, hey, any concerns about this? So where exactly is it going to be? Um, I think it's probably intended to be on the bandstand area of the rec field, and okay. depend, it may be part of the rec field, depending on what kind of things we wind up doing. Okay, but it won't interfere with the ball field or any. No. There'll be like electric chainsaws. There'll be electric um, yeah. lawnmowers. Yeah, but they're not going to be driving. They're not going to be driving vehicles around on our. No, no. Well, lawnmowers, they might be electric lawnmowers. That's yeah, okay. but they won't. They'll stay away from the ball field. Pardon me? Yeah. Won't they stay away from the ball field if you tell oh. them to? I guess it's they may be a part of the rec field. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you're you're not, no, no, I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure. A, they don't damage the bandstand. <laughs> if they're going to use the bandstand, they shouldn't coordinate. They should coordinate with the bandstand. Yeah, I've already said I would take okay. care of that. So. All right. Okay. Yep. I have no problem with that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I Everybody else okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. And that's what that's what we're working on. It. Okay. Details to be related. Look sharp. I'm gonna give a chainsaw. Electric yes, chainsaw I am. Demonstration. Yes, I am. Right. No one's asked me, but I have a chainsaw that's electric, and for? I plan. Yeah. So I told my husband that I'm going to put your chaps on and your so my safe. chaps on and my safety pen, and I'm going to demonstrate. Well, that was a yeah, something I had thought about. We had down the you. trees around the mall. <laughs> yeah, I think that I know that there are there was some interest in demoing electric chainsaws, for example. But I was I I wondered if I should well 
probably what we wouldn't do was let people try out a chainsaw. No. We just worried about town liability. Yeah, no, I would but not do that. Owners of them may be interested in demoing no, 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 them, no, no, but be not, careful for whatever you, know, you do. Be careful. People want to use a string trimmer or a push mower or a yeah, but probably mower. not the chainsaw. I would. I'd be surprised if they quick to consult with that. But if they wanted to come to my house, they could probably yep. try. Of course, that's check on that that's all I had to ask about oh. that. Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure it's safe. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. I'll tell you, if electric chainsaws, anything like electric car, it's going to have a lot of torque. They work I've got well. A lot of torque. What, what kind of vehicle? Mm -hmm. I think it's a big one. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I, love I love it too. Well, that's the battery. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Okay. okay. Hey, we're good. Okay. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to keep us on. Keep us on. I've one more thing not related to that that I want to. Okay, go. Um, just to let you guys know, um, I have a couple of private roads that are in the works that will be needing to be named private roads. Right now, they're just private driveways. Um, there's a private drive off French Road that already has three addresses on it, and I've got two more. That I've been requested to sign. So, so who's our Sarah? Who's our e nine one one personnel? Is it Dave? That's me. That's oh, it's you. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Me. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then there's another one at the bottom of Molly Super Road that currently has two addresses on it, and somebody's bought a third lot. He's planning to build next year, but he asked me about getting rolling on getting a nine one one address assigned. Same thing. Uh, three addresses typically triggers. The assignment of a private road. I haven't done this yet. Um, you guys have done this, and we yeah. have. Well, Renwood Lane. I remember this thinking about the names. Like we weren't allowed to, or we had to get the. Yeah. The select board had to approve the name. Didn't we get a recommendation from the landowners? My understanding yes, is that get I first yes, get a recommendation right. from the landowners. It brings it to you as a motion. And I try to, do, try yeah. to do them both at once quickly yep. as I can. That's fine. And I would also like to ask you guys real quick. I believe there are still still two or three PRs in town. PR two, PR five, maybe one other one. Um, guy I talked to at the state nine one one board says that Middlesex is one of two towns that still have numbered private roads. The state nine one one board does not like them and would like us to get rid of them. So I'm just giving you the history that uh, uh, Brian and Julie, nine one one coordinator, take that over to the landowners. The landowners on those roads do not agree or cooperate on a name until they stay. So oh. and we're just gonna have to assign. Then we can assign a name. We can tell the well, we can ask them, I can ask them to cooperate and say, well, right. Well, if I'm you don't want to give me a, a, a suggestion, I will. Otherwise, you're going to be proud. I will submit some other suggestions. You can participate or not. But. Sarah, wasn't it also we couldn't make them change the road? I believe we could not make them. Yeah, I believe we couldn't make them change the name, and that's why it didn't change. Bottom line. Okay. Well. I would say leave it alone. If the if the well, yeah, 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 I don't care, they don't like it. If they, if they say <laughs> you have to change it, then we have to do it. If the says you have to do it, then I'll let I'll report yeah. back to you. But yeah, I'm not yeah, looking for trouble. Well, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I I don't want to get more with the money. No, I don't either. But you know, if the state suggested the state, but if the state, the state, the state, the state says, but they did say they could change We have to do it. Okay. Not that he would like us to do it. We yeah. have to do it. Okay, well, obviously, we'll do it. But That's fine. I, would now. Prefer I will to. leave it at that. Then. We would prefer not to. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you. So um, now, 45 minutes late, we're going to uh, conduct our informational meeting on how Middlesex should spend potential quantum. Coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery plan action unlikely. And we have a guest here, I presume, who is interested in that. Uh, yes, so, okay. and, and I also um, have an interest in uh, the highway department and some of the parts. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Roland Gilbert for those who don't know. Okay, thank you. Welcome. 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 We like seeing people in person. This is yeah. Not been uh, happening for the past year. So I'm happy to be here in person, Peter. I would like to explain that I'm fully vaccinated. 
Um, but I've had a kidney transplant and so I'm immunosuppressed and they don't know if um, it works. So I'm wearing this. That's fine. It's time to make the choice. Yeah. 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 You need I'm glad to see you guys meeting again. Do so. you need us to step back or put on masks ourselves? No, or? no. I'm, uh, I, I think it's an abundance of caution as the doctor tells me. So, did you have a question for the highway people, or were you just interested in hearing more? Well, I had a special request. Um, okay. And I, I'll be quick because it's a trivial thing. We don't have a big crowd here for the public hearing, so okay. that's a good sign. Well, uh, Shane and I have been trying to get together. We haven't been able to. I missed him today. Um, and I came down here into the eat here and saw a meeting and thought, oh, well, let me drop in and see how this helps. Okay. okay. No, that's fine. Okay. So we have a um, we have a snapping turtle who has laid some eggs uh, right on the edge of the road. And, um, Where is this? Uh, Daniel's Farm Road. Okay. Yep. And um, the kids heard us talking about it, and we were saying he was going on the road, road there. But so we must have been under, under that mask. Is that what that post is? Yes. For the flag on. Yeah. It's okay. Taken. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a simple request. I just wondered if you could. Skirt. I don't even know if you're going to grade there, but we've got new graders. We we're going to at some yeah. point. <laughs> okay. So we can I, certainly avoid yeah, it. We can certainly yeah, avoid, we're avoid it. Yes, right? absolutely. Um, we're actually we're going to thought about sending someone out with a York grade tomorrow, and that might be a little easier. They might be able to get around it better than the grade. Yeah. And it's just one side where the water is. Right. And it's the other side. So, so if you could just. Yeah, no problem. Take the show out to the kids. Yeah. yeah. How long will the eggs be there? You know. Well, you know, we thought it was a simple thing, and then it turns out that the gestation period is a function of weather and maybe so yeah. three six months. Oh wow! And it was uh, it was uh, two it weeks ago. We, there. We saw yeah. her. She just came up from um, the pond and got right to the road. Is she sticking around there? Wow. Oh, uh, thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay. You well, well too much of it? you know where it is, Shane. Yeah, right? I know where it is. I saw the flag today. Okay, so just yeah. let the guys. It's almost right across from what's his name's driveway. Right, right up. Yeah. Yep. And you'll let the guys know. What's that? You'll let the guys know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Save the hey. turtles. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the summer. Thank you thank for coming. Oh, oh got the key. He wouldn't get through. No. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So now we're back to our public information meetings. Do we do we know how much money we're getting? It has to change. Um, what were we were at like five hundred and yes, I haven't heard anything as far as any changes. Um, let me just give you a quick overview. Yeah, nothing please. has really changed from any discussion we've had. The only thing that's different, remember, we were in um, what was called the interim final rule. And that was a period where they were taking comments. Um, that period has passed last week. So we're now at the point where they are, they are going to finalize that. The big question is, will anything change? And people I've talked to have said they think it's highly unlikely. They think the way it was written is most likely the way it's going to stay. And I had discussions with Rob about this and when uh, we were um, talking about some of this. So, who's well? Uh, our attorney. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rob Helper. Yeah. So, the, the allowable uses are still the same. And I'm just going to tick these off and we can talk a little bit about it. But the first one is support for public health expenditures. So funding ongoing COVID-19 mitigation efforts, medical expenses, behavioral health care, uh, and certain public health and safety staff. And we don't have, well, we, we do have uh, a health officer, yeah. but that's a volunteer position, Sarah? No, it's no. paid. No, it's paid. But we budget for it. 
I, well, I guess the treasury. Is this all on the, the treasury? State treasurer? No, the U.S. Treasury. Thank you. Sorry, go on. Um, so the question there, and again, back up for a minute. Anything that that is a budget item, we cannot support. So we pay a health officer. So we can't take money from this and put the money back in our general fund and pay a health officer or pay for any other thing. So this is all not planned kind of stuff. Um, and I, I don't know if anyone can think of any other medical expenses, behavioral health care, anything that would fall under this. I couldn't, but I thought, you know, let's let's work down through them. Um, address the negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, um, including harms to workers, our workers, um, households in general, small businesses, industry, and public sector. Again, as far as public sector, our I can't think of anything that we were negatively impacted financially. Um, as far as other, again, we don't have a lot of industry or, or even the private businesses in town, but it seems to me that anyone who needed financial support was able to apply for the what's it, PPE money, and I think there's another funds of money. I mean, I didn't see anybody closing. Uh, Due to uh, COVID uh, economic issues, but I mean that, that's uh, that is one that we can consider replacing lost public sector revenue. Well, we didn't have did, did we, we didn't have revenue? red hand closed because of COVID. I mean, they were still open. They just didn't open, have what were inside business. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They did um, the yeah. You know they they did what they needed to do. And, uh, this, yeah, no, your just question. Okay. Um, did we lose as a town any specific revenue? That, I mean, anything Actually, different? I think we made out as a town. I, that's what I, I, I mean, we had got extra highway money. Yeah. We got, you know, so no, we didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, premium pay for essential workers. Again, this is for us. Um, if we had, uh, okay. if we had a professional, Ambulance squad or something like that who would be high so risk worker. Like they were transporting potentially. Right. Right. But you know, we have a volunteer, we have a fast squad, we don't have an ambulance service. Um, we have so few employees in the town anyway. Um, for the most part, I don't think we we were affected by that. But back to the other one with the do you remember? Um, Dorinda, did anyone else watch that webinar training? I don't know. I put it out there. I was the only yeah. one that attended yeah, it. I watched that it too. And did, did you remember the piece where they talked about the last five years of loss and how oh, you put yeah. that was an interesting um, piece? And I can't state it because I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was around like. Was it something averaging? It was an averaging over, five over the five years or something. And then you could, um, so you could include this year and next year maybe. There were some things, you, and then you could take some weird formula yeah. of that and get a lump sum and do whatever you wanted with that money. So that would become, it was like lost money. Right. And then that lost money could be turned into anything. We could give it away we could we could buy you know whatever yeah, like greater <laughs> right i mean there's we could do whatever we want with it if you could make right. the formula you make work that formula. and make it seem like yeah. a, an amount of money that is worth trying out that formula so there was that piece that i found the most interesting of that and i can't remember how it was but it might be something that we look into because it wasn't just about like, oh, we're taking losses. It had to do with like people, like you, what you, you're getting for people's taxes. And um, was it within a certain percentage of your 
friendly. Yeah. Something like that that right. made it be like, oh, that could be a way that you can turn that money into. Would you get additional money or just no? no it's all a part of that. Use some of this out of this allocation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You could use yeah. money, and I think that amount gets determined by this lost revenue calculation. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I, it may be worth going back and trying to find and understand what that. And they were they were willing to help us like that woman who was on they were more than willing to help work from with us from the league uh, to yeah. you know see if that is viable and makes sense I mean we may be a town that doesn't even have that fall into that category of having these losses but okay um I'll see if I can find the slides from VLCT because I do re I do remember that if I bookmarked it um yeah that was one and then the other one that we've been talking about from the beginning which is uh, the infrastructure investments in water municipal water systems sewer systems and broadband and that's it that's the whole that's the whole act i mean peter you and i had a conversation a long time ago when this was first coming down and, and, and the, the idea that we are what would have to million dollars? We're unlikely that we are going to build. No, I mean, no way. I mean, unless, unless there was some huge other federal program. I mean, we're not we're not putting in sewer systems or water systems or anything. It would cost millions and millions and millions of dollars, and we don't have the resources, bonding capacity, anything to even consider. Didn't we have that big study about ten years ago that said there was no way that even if the whole town was on it, they, that it was affordable. I think so. I mean, I wasn't on the board there, but I do remember reading that. The water study, yeah. Well, so again, this is just my memory, but I'd say it was very affordable. It was. What, what happened was, and, and help me out if anybody else remembers, that I think it was if we created a water district for the village, in other words, for the area that it was going to be served, yeah. the individual homeowners, and I can't remember what the business was, it was like five or six hundred dollars a year. That's not right. Do you remember? I you remember? Yeah. That's my memory. It was something like that. And there was just a massive hue and cry about, you know, how dare I mean, if you said to me I could have limited, pure, clean, unlimited, pure, clean water for five or six hundred dollars, I'd pour concrete down my well right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's coming, but I'm just I'm just saying yeah. it was a, there was a big hue and cry that they yeah. thought that the yeah. people yeah. in the village thought. That the the taxpayers of the town overall should pay for this, and then the, and then nobody liked the idea that the whole town is paying for the water for right. twenty five thousand. I remember that part of it. Right. So, so it just it was that small. It was very project. small. Okay. Is there well, it could be potentially more. It, it could it could potentially cover more territory. Sure. But it, the bottom line was the concept was that the people are going to use the system should, should pay for it, right. and they didn't want them. But that was also before the inflation of everything. Uh, I mean, <laughs> 10 years ago, when we begin to pay for even right. half of it, um, it was a big deal. We have years, though, more than we thought to spend this money. We do. So, this is we not have, like it has to be spent by no. December 2023. Right. It's like, no, it's 25, like, yeah, 25, 25, I think, or seven, yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 And my my thing that I also took away from that training was that. There's going to be a lot of broadband money coming down the pipe and, you know, make sure that you understand what that money is. If, you, if you're wanting to use it for broadband, keep in mind that there may already be broadband money and that you would be, in effect, sort of wasting this money because there's already money coming for broadband. Um, but I don't know the answer to well, that. I don't know what that I means. Would, I like, would tell you, and probably you know better, so I don't know if you've been on the board, but even with the grant that the Washington Electric Co op is trying to get from the Department of Agriculture, um, it's it's a fraction of what we need. They're applying for 20 million and they need far more than that. Um, um, it's just, it, it, it's very expensive to do it's, broad it's one, and then it's not even the last mile, it's everything up to right. bring it to your house, yeah. and that's going to be done by you guys. Yeah. yeah, well, even, well, and again, it's going to get um, parceled out, if you will, as far as middle mile, which is probably more what the Washington Electric's looking at doing, and then CB Fiber's more the last mile stuff, right. and of course, the, the, the big providers. 
Uh, the uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns is really, really, really pushing that Delta Vesta Broadway. Um, that there'll be enough money. I, I, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, and the person who they've hired um, is Anthony Brother. It, I don't know. She's not real helpful. <laughs> um, the you know I asked her to attend the meetings by Zoom. Really? She seems like I will come to a meeting. I will do this and that. I know it, but you know I had a question about the paperwork that we signed off yeah. at the last meeting, and I sent an email to her asking her for some advice on something. She sent me back the well, how the statute ran, you yeah. know, how, and it was like, well, I already have that information. I was asking for your advice, but she was, she didn't want to. Yeah, whether she just doesn't have a knowledge base around any of this. Their advice and what she was trying to, to promote to me was just invest the money because you can keep the interest. Okay. And you can use it however you want. The interest. So that you know what? So the idea that we're going to invest the money, wait till 2025, and then just let it go back and just keep the that's interest. Crazy to me. Seems that sounds really like bad yeah. advice. To me. That's bad. Yeah. So do we have an idea of assuming this broadband thing all comes together the way yeah. we hope it will? How much money do they need every penny of the money to make it work, or is there some amount that's less than all the money that'll make it work? Um, do we know? I don't. I suspect it's pretty close to the total amount, uh, although it's going to come in chunks. Right. But and we haven't, we were supposed to see the first piece. chunk in June, and we still like have that. not seen it. Okay. I mean, we're set up and ready to go. We're into that all the, the the paperwork we're ready to draw it down there's still there's still then the county chunk which will come after that and then the second set of payments will come a year later, mm -hmm. year later. Yeah. well yeah after the, right. once the government it's approves it, it hasn't passed yet well how much do you get in the first half of it a quarter of it? no there's two there, well there's two two tranches of money there's the local money which is the smaller portion and then there's our share of the Big ball. <laughs> County. County. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we've been only approved for 189,000. Okay. And we're supposed, we should have received half of that in June, oh, but see. it has half not half. arrived. So around 90 grand. And then we get, that comes right. And then, and then next a year, we right. get the other 90 grand. Right. And then at some point, we get the. the, the right. Yeah. Right. And I know there's there have been issues in Washington about this because Vermont and some other states don't have county government that you know nobody really thought about this. So it's like, what do you do? Well, if there's no county government that's gonna sit there and dole out the money. You might have an order. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And that's even that's a a strange situation in and of itself. So I know there's been so some... they have that county tax that yeah. we all pay. So. Um, so that piece is still, you know, we're we're trying to figure out how that's how that's going to actually happen. I and I think I think Scott's office has talked with our federal folks saying the easiest way for us to do this in Vermont is the money comes to the state. The formulas are there. We know how the money gets distributed by county and then to each town. We, you know, we just have to do it. But then, I don't know, they're still messing around with it in, in Washington. So, our, we have to do a reporting, and the first reporting is due in October. Well, <laughs> That'll be an easy one. Well, that's no, easy one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. No, no, um, no money is received. Right. Or spend right. It. Right. So. That's you know, that's where we're at. Um, so where is where is CEP fiber at this point in time? Are they waiting for us to get the MOU back? They did a draft. I gave right. it to Rob's Rob. got it. I know. I've had two conversations with Rob. Um, first one was just an education kind of thing to try and give him some context for 
what was going on and he wanted to dig into some of the issues you know that we had talked about in terms of protections and he says some of this is so new there's no case law on it and right. there's not even good statute on it so his sense was that he really kind of needs to go back to just concepts under general law yeah. right contract law and property rights and those kinds of things um, and go from there so as far as i know from um from cb fiber uh there the plan of the the moortown of uh, middlesex worcester callis that as the first route has not changed um I know that Worcester is in a situation like we are, where they are considering um, doing something, although they're, well, they have less money, but they also have far less households because a big chunk of their broadband is provided. Um, what about our people that are provided from Comcast? This was not covered them. We, we this don't doesn't cover them. Money this, for them because they have adequate. Because they already have adequate. Yes. So this is related to households in middle six that have less than the 25 yep. gigabyte service. Yes, exactly. Right. So how many in our town have Comcast? I thought it was just. I just brought it up to the south of East Hill. Yeah. But that's as far as that's it. Gone. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that just happened. What's that? I've got it. Yeah. Everybody Shady Real Road has it. Up to the school. Yeah. 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 French doesn't French Road in that area have it or no? Uh -huh. Oh, what I about they Verizon that says that, like, they say that we have it, we pay for it, but we don't actually get it. Oh, for places like Verizon? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, no, because. Or not Verizon, what's it called? Um, Com uh, Com Comcast, whatever. It's all so it's all it's all right. communication. Yeah, that's, well, and then, you know, that there was a lot of preliminary work done in terms of the feasibility study, actually surveying households to find out, you know, what are you supposed to be getting? What are you actually getting? And so you're right. You know, they're saying that, yeah, you are getting, you're getting DSL, that's what we're right. calling it, but everybody knows, no, it never gets to that. So, no, I just have yeah. to, I got a question for the minutes. You said um, uh, the plan for Moortown, Middlesex, Worcester, and Callis has not changed. You have to remember that there has not been a public meeting that has informed the reader, the voters, or anybody about oh. what those plans are. Um, yeah. So can you just out you're, you're free to outline anything? In the sure. Program? I mean, it's just it's basically what we're considering. Um, CV Fiber's approach to all four, at least that's my understanding, all four of the select boards in those communities with similar proposals, you know, based based upon the feasibility studies and the business plan. That this is a you know very high priority group. Um, and high need and high interest. So the take rates, it all kind of comes together for CP Fiber to make this profitable, if you will, that there will be enough people interested in signing up for service that um, it's doable. So you've got a part of, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You've got a part of Moortown, the uh, Waits Hill Telecom covers most of it. But the side closest to us, they do not, and I think up on the common road, and um, I can't remember the name of the other road that comes down through. So there, that's actually a fairly small part of Morton. We're um, our piece is fairly large because Comcast does not cover much. So with us, it's the majority. Worcester, I don't know, but it's they've got a fair amount covered by Comcast, and I think Callis probably does not have an awful lot of service. But my understanding with Callis is there is interest on the part of Velco to run fiber from Callis to the Waco, it's that little power generating dam there in Worcester, I believe, right? The dam in Worcester? Yeah, isn't that out, out west? Uh, Where's the, oh, that little thing. Yeah, right, right across school. from where the school is. I think, I think we'll go in there. So. But for some reason, there's yeah. real interest in- It's never come up, so I don't know. No, but, um, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, there's real interest on the part of Velcro investing some money to get fiber to that dam. Seems to be important. So Callis is looking at um, kind of jumping on with that. Mm -hmm. Will they do fiber at the dam? 
Well, that's what I'm saying. I can find that out. Okay. I mean, right. I, I, I talked to Steve and Nolan a lot. Okay. So let me yeah. ask this question. The total amount that we're paying to hoping to get us like five hundred something, right? About five. So where does the rest of the money come from from CB fiber to build the broadband? So I guess my worry is we hand them this money and the project never gets complete. Right, and that's one of the things I'm uh, looking at as far as the money will come from. There's there's money through legislative appropriation. Provided. For broadband, yep. there's money through other um, federal sources like the Northern Borders Grant, USDA money. Um, there probably will be some other federal money, although it's like Mary said, it's not going to come close. They will have to sell bonds at some point. They will have to go to the bond bank, and they um, the legislature essentially passed. Um, a bill, or it was a, another omnibus bill that um, directed VETA to provide extremely favorable terms to any of the CUDs um, for broadband expansion. And there's, and that understanding that it is high risk. So there's some backing there uh, in terms of the risk factors that. So how much do you think they can get from the Initially? Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard that from them. I would think initially they're going to probably have to go after somewhere between seven and ten million. And that would build the remainder of our project probably plus a seven phase. Does it have to be all or nothing? Like Moortown, Middlesex, Cal Worcester, Callis. What if Worcester and Callis say, actually, we don't want to be a, a part of this? Does that affect the overall, like, do they have to have all four on board to make this? Ideally. Mm -hmm. Ideally, yeah. Because I don't know. Otherwise, you, well, they want the money, although probably both of those towns are not going to give them. I don't. Because, I mean, I, if Moore Town, you said that most of it yeah. covered, and you said Worcester, you had some coverage. You yeah. Know, I'm not. Although, you know, and, and again, with, you know, one of the issues that small towns like ours face is what the spend the money on. Because otherwise, we return the money. Otherwise, you don't. Right. Or you don't. You yeah. So why would, you going back to your previous thing, why in the world? Would the League of Cities and Towns recommend that we invest the money, keep the interest, and give the money back? I mean, that just that well, I'm not saying they're saying don't. give the money back, but they're saying just hold on to it. Might find, something might come up, right? And down. broadband might be paid for. All this. they they kept saying that, like, don't throw all your money into broadband because there's all of this money coming in, millions of dollars for broadband that may end well, up. See, that's the thing is, I don't think they've quantified it because millions coming in, but yes. more millions are needed. I mean, this is kind of like electrification. Yeah. This is like providing a brand new service. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so the thought that, you know, just because there are holes there that solve the problem, it's, it's just not even There's a lot more to going broadband out there. So yeah. the, the, the middle sex portion, Hello. Just thinking. Two and a half million. Two and a half million. Yeah. Roughly. Uh, so our. But it can't be done alone. These, they, they're not going to do that alone. They're Probably not, have, because then you have the issue of transmission lines. So you have to think about where can we build that we can actually get access to the main pipe for, for connecting to the internet and how we're going to manage this and again i think one of the, one of the reasons this um is of interest is because i think waitsfield telecom has been approached about being the operator which you know they're independent they're you know they're not one of the telecoms that carries a lot of baggage like some of the others, and um, and you know the, the the incumbents have been left out of this. Who who you mean the incumbents? I consolidated. Oh, the you mean the private utilities? Yeah, yeah. 
who manages the um, repairs of it? So like WEC, for example, maintains it. who maintains it, right? Because WEC, our power goes out all the time because it's power, things in the middle of the woods and um, trees falling Red on them. Squirrels. <laughs> and so I'm picturing the same thing happening to these fiber cables. Um, I know WEC has talked about bringing like on Culver Hill Road where the problem is like we in my little area tend to be like when there's only five people out in Middlesex, it's my neighborhood. Right. And and um, or our neighborhood on East Hill. Right, but I mean, and I've been out twice in the last uh, two weeks. Right, yeah. and so right. like that. I mean, I guess who maintains it? Okay, first of all, let me say the fiber optic cable is much stronger than telephone cable or power. Uh, transmission lines and can withstand a fair like amount. A tree falling down. Yeah, um, not necessarily a big tree, but smaller trees will it'll, it'll just hold it up. Um, that will that will be the responsibility of the operator. So whoever take a couple of weeks, so probably. So they've got the infrastructure in place to um, fix lines. They have the ability to do installations to homes. They have the ability to run that whole system um, as an operation center and get people connected to the internet, all that routing stuff. So typically, you know, in a in a project like this, because because this is a public project, you're you're not going to build that kind of infrastructure on your own. Again, the the cost is just. And it doesn't make sense. There are other providers out there who can who can do that, who can invest in it, who would be very, very happy to have agreements with uh, communication union districts for a fee to uh, be able to, to run a system. They also do the building. Um, it's you know, I mean the, the CEDs are even leaner and leaner than the town government. No staff. At least in this one, there's no intention to have staff. Every now and then, a project manager or something like that. Yeah. Remind me what CED stands for. What's that? Remind me what CED stands for. Communication Union District. Okay. Thank you. Liz. So when when do we, as a board, have to make decisions? Well, I think fairly soon. Okay. And I can I can nail that down with. Uh, but we're not going to do it until we get back from Rob. Uh, right. And we'll deal with the right. changes and then we have to submit right. them. To That's correct. But I'm, just, but I'm just saying, you know, we really got to iron out if there is another potential use. Right. This thing you were talking about, Liz. Um, and uh, yeah, right. we need to do that. And then I'm I am I am just reluctant. I mean, I, I'm sure Rob can iron out the, the MOU, so yeah. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. So we can be comfortable with that, assuming that CB fiber will then accept whatever its changes are. Yeah. But um you know that that uh that thing we signed, I believe Dorinda says that we turn over the money when we get it, right? Within so many days. Yeah. Well, not what we signed for the government money, no, no, but no, it was what that MOU has in it. Right. It a, said um, that we were supposed to turn it over, I think, within 30 days 30 or something. And what happens if we don't? Are they going to give up on us and say, well, sorry, Middlesex, you're not part of this? Or are they going to wait because we're pushing back and saying, wait a minute, we don't know yet. We want to understand where all these other funding sources are coming in. Right. And so I think that I would be reluctant personally to not feel like I have a good sense of where this is going next and handing them all this money. Well, I think the other side of it is, is we don't know what the other towns are doing and we know they can't do it with just our funds. So no. I think, right. I think before, and I would think the other towns would feel the same way before they commit. They want to know who's right. in and who's not. Right. And, and that could be everybody's doing the same thing. They're doing and the same right. thing. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Part of what they, they are, they do it, you know. Yeah. I'll yeah. ask my friend Ted, who's the chair of the Worcester Black Board. Oh, good. Yeah. And ask him what What's his last name? Liam. Yeah. Ask him. I did ask him, and he said they hadn't really talked about it yet. Like they haven't 
Because they're, you know, again, they're a small town, right? Yeah. And he hasn't been on the board that long. Yet. Probably five years. Okay. I think he's more recently chair. He's more recently chair. Yeah. Well, I just think, and this is exactly what I said before, this potentially is an unbelievable opportunity for the town of Middlesex. But number one, if there are other things we can use it for, I want to understand what they are. I don't want to just dismiss that out of hand. Right. And um, as much as we don't have a lot of business in town, we have a lot of small businesses in town. And I'm concerned that some of them just couldn't get it as easy as it was. Some of them couldn't get it, get it together to get the PPP money. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how we, I don't know how we figure that out. Do we have any kind of way to calculate the number of small businesses in our town? I mean, I know they have put some figures in the town plan, but it was, I think the planning commission had that stuff. There's a lot of like, you know, little, LLCs and DBAs, right? right. People right out of their homes. Right. Yeah, you're never going to count all those. All right. Um, and you know, they did. I, to be fair, there are there were a lot of opportunities for small businesses of all income levels and all yeah. sizes. That um, you know, there were opportunities for them to have access to money for that. So I'd be less concerned about the small business and right. thinking like I mean, like I said, Peter, like well. Could we use 10,000 of it to put in the Middlesex Community Fund, which was started as sort of a pandemic fund to help families? So we were giving money out to families. You know, if there's an opportunity to sort of fund it with this little amount of money, 10,000 is nothing, but it's a lot for the fund, right? Um, it's and, a lot as long fund. as it wasn't re like required these reporting ways to say where everything it's went, or is it just this I fund was started because of the pandemic and that's enough? But that's for you know taking it a small amount. I just, amount I just want to be help. sure we have a plan to get through, get the answers to yeah. these questions because I just have the feeling, and maybe I'm wrong, but I have the feeling that this is the old snowball rolling down the hill, and one of those days that snowball is going to come right through the wall here and be right in the middle of this room, and we're going to have to make a decision within a fairly short period of time. Decision about removing the snowball. <laughs> well, to remove the, the snowball. But I'm just, but I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just saying. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the money's going to come in. CB Fiber is going to want the money, and right. we're well, going to have to say, well, we'll give you eighty percent of the money, or ninety percent of the money, or all the money, or I don't know what we're saying. Well, and again, with the time frame, the way it's laid out right now, the only piece we have coming is the safety tax. Right. Or, 90. 90, 90, 90, 000. 000. You're making you're making Sarah have a heart attack. She said I took ten thousand. So, yeah. So it's it's yeah. going to be piecemeal anyway. Over at least a year. Yeah, yeah, but once so, we start, once we start paying, once the money you commit, out, you once commit to do it, it's going to be pretty hard to pull it back. Well, well and maybe okay. I don't know. Yeah. There may be you know there. I mean, Rob and I can have had some discussions about performance. Oh no no no! So, that's a different. That's yeah. a whole different issue. I mean, I I am very concerned that somehow all this money just goes right. out, out in the. But they need this, so they also they're leveraging our money yeah. to get other money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Especially that's from a the big, money. Yes, that's a big piece. Ready, right. what are you say? I just uh, I've heard of other monies that are geared towards you know public buildings and, and making infrastructure improvements within the buildings and stuff. And I don't know if this money allows any for any of that no, it doesn't. for town it does buildings not. and whatnot. I was just thinking about that as you guys were talking about all yeah. of this. Would have been nice. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't. Now you're talking about this C D fiber. Yeah. So what happens, you know, to like companies like consolidated or those companies you talked about a minute ago. They're they don't have competitors, huh? They're potential competitors of oh, CV. Yeah. But they're not coming. So consolidated is not worth or Comcast. It's not worth their time or money to come to these to the last mile, to the people that are not being served by them. And they, you know, presumably never will. They just don't care enough and it's right. just not worth well, it. Well, it's not financial. So, it's not financial. Right. Right. It's not financial. So this is trying to reach those people. Now, is that to say that consolidated isn't gonna 
decide, oh, well, you know, I'm going to compete with, with CB Fiber and I'm going to bring now fiber to Liz's house when it wasn't there before. Sure, that might happen because they might be like, oh, you know, I see a competitor, but right now that's not their intention. Right. Like Comcast, in order for, that, for, for us to get Comcast, they quote us something like $10,000 a family yeah. for Culver Hill Road, which yeah. is right off of Route 2, right, you know, right Route mm -hmm. 12, less than a mile, and there's cable on Route 12. And they're like, yeah, we'll do it for 40000 to your house. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, that's not. So what there I is, know. and it, I, get, I guess it's consolidated, I don't even know, but there's a fiber line that goes right up over Molly Superfood yeah. School. Yeah, it comes up McCullough Road. Right. Right. McCullough Hill. It goes up McCullough Hill. McCullough Hill from down here. Right. And it's ironically, I last week I I stopped my landline. And so I talked to this woman in New Hampshire and she's really, really nice. I said, You're the nicest person I've ever talked to in consolidated. I mean, seriously. I mean, she's very, very pleasant. So then they had a little survey afterwards. And so they said, her name was April. And I said, April did a tremendous job. I mean, it's great. Raise her up. So then the next question, what do you think about uh, the internet on uh, consolidated communications? It's terrible. <laughs> it's right. And I just went down through. Well, about eight o'clock that night, I get a call from this woman, April supervisor, saying, yeah. what do you mean? And I said, there's nothing wrong with April, but I said, you guys stink. I said, your own guys, your own technicians are talking that you have this fiber optic. All you need is like an amplifier or whatever you call it, down by 80 crows, and you could service all of Brook Road, all of McCullough Road, all of Great Brook Road. I mean, they keep telling you that, but you don't want to do it. Well, I called them, Victor, and said, okay, I want to connect to your farm. Yeah. The number they gave us for our neighborhood was twenty five thousand. Right, I mean that's ridiculousness. That's because so it's they fiber. Said. See, Comcast is going to serve it. Eight. Yeah, Comcast is going to serve it. Which is a, a dead technology. So right. right, they're going to serve it with what? Cable. Cable. Which is yeah. Fiber, yeah. But he said that we're 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 going to that's going to come within a year to to two years. He said, oh, okay. But also, I didn't you know which doesn't have anything to do with this and. Two people this week have tried to get on to consolidated and it won't. They said they're not taking any new internet customers. What? Mm -hmm. right. So all they have here is DSL. Yeah. And they cannot, there's no capacity. You mean there's they keep so splitting bad. lines. They keep splitting them yeah. and splitting yeah. them and splitting yeah. them. So how would you get internet if you moved to a new house in Middle Center? You wouldn't. You may not. So bad. You were talking about. That's right? nice. These people were. Uh, they've been served uh, for years and years and years, and they decided uh, they were living. You know, the the person that had the account uh, was leaving. So these new people that had lived right, right there. Turn on. My understanding they said, can we swap this account over to our name? No. From our mother's name? Even like name? a new owner can't get internet? Mm. And if can they you swap it over? And they said, no, if you swap it over, you're not going to have internet service. Yeah. So story. these people that just bought houses in Middlesex from somebody who sold it won't have consolidated. Uh, no. They won't That's have anything. They'll have to, you know, go get. I know that Why somebody who just sweet? bought a place on McCullough Hill Road, yeah, they know. paid like, I know it was over $10,000 and they had to sign either a three to five year contract mm -hmm. in order to get it. So in other words, do not cancel consolidated because you'll never get it back. Yeah. That's what they're. That's Pay what your bills. Doing. Yeah. When, when consolidated <laughs> by oh my God. And it takes over, I lost my DSL connection, which actually was a fairly big connection overnight. All of a sudden, I had no internet. I called them up and said, What did you do? Where's, you know, they went, You don't have, have internet. Oh, God. They had no record of it. I said, Well, I, since I moved in here, you know, for 15 or 20 years, I've had internet, and, and you know, we can't find your account. Well, just put it back. <laughs> nope. Did you? So what did, did you, you pay for? I it? went to the manager, the public service board, the public service department. I went to the 
legislature and I went to the How attorney did it take? general's office. So probably three months. And I you didn't to, have internet? No, I had internet. Had to go to Red Bank. Was when was right. this? This was two years ago. And so how did you get it back? Um, well, the attorney general finally, you know, but I kept getting the public service board as well. It's not regulated. We don't really have any authority. Mm -hmm. and I said, I'm not about that now. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. There's an opportunity. And the oh, attorney was finally uh, a young attorney. Oh, yeah. 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 And I knew a lot of these people because they've all worked for, for Verizon and all the companies. And the guy who's head of uh, internet deployment for Consolidated now, it was funny, came down and he knew me from that. Uh, and he, he actually came to me. How the hell did you put on enough pressure? To get us to do this, Jesus. yeah, there it goes. But yeah, I did, I did, and I had, I had to buy a business connection about more three expensive. times, yeah. about three times more expensive. But the great thing about a business connection, they have to respond in twenty four hours. They show. So did you, what was your business? I went private consulting. Aren't we all? Yep. <laughs> so I could open a business account. Yeah. I got to tell you, three times, it's very expensive. probably three times expensive as DSL. Will it be faster? I, no, probably not. You can write it off. Really. You can write it off. Yeah. I, I, I get five by five. Yes, I have, so, which is terrible. Like pay yes, yes, right? right? No, not not a. Oh, so it's actually good. come down. <laughs> I've already told my family. Don't cancel. <laughs> Don't ever cancel because I have this. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm taxed like a hundred percent. Bundle from companies? Yes. Yes, let's uh, keep moving. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. So, so the bottom line is there's nothing we need to do right now. No. We're going to get some more, uh, more information is coming and we're going to look into these other uses. I will try. Right. And I will okay. try to find out where the other three that's select that's words. That's all right. Yep. That'd be great. I think that's about as much as we And I just think we have to be listening for that the rumble of that snowball. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to know what they're gonna do with that shovel the the snow. Yeah. Get out our right. shovels. I mean, what if, I mean the analogy just doesn't quite follow. Well, I'm so, I'm sorry, Mary, but I think that <laughs> my intent was just to say. My fear is that we're going to have to make a quick decision, and I don't like to make quick decisions. But I don't definitely don't like to make decisions where I feel like we don't have all the information. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's constantly changing, <laughs> and now we're going to have a broadband board with uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christine and and Abby's going to be on it. Our general manager, Wes. Oh. oh. Sale. Even yeah. though she's going to be on it. Okay. I'm going to say this concludes our yes, it does. Yeah. public information here. Uh, please know. Thank you. Uh, and not so subtle way that nobody showed up. <laughs> that the person that showed up wanted to talk about turtle eggs. <laughs> so that part is Okay. So. Approving minutes of July 6, 2021, regular select board meeting and the July 13th, 2021, special select board meeting. Action like this. Move approval. Second. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, correspondence. WCUUSD letter RE Middlesex vacancy on the WCUUSD <laughs> board. Actually, who resigned from the board? She's now our principal. She's now oh, the principal, Carolyn. so she can't be on the board. Wait, we have to appoint someone? No, no we have to no. recommend. No, we don't recommend. No, we don't recommend. Just an update. Oh, action <laughs> unlikely. I thought you said action okay. likely. No. Okay, so we have to know about it. And just do nothing. Just it was just to let you know, I think. They're just trying to fill it. And is there someone who would like to do it? Yeah. Actually, they have two names already. Oh, and okay. yeah. Should the board wish to express their thoughts regarding this candidate? Who are they? 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 Who are they?
Ursula Sandry, Stan, Stanley, Patrick Wally, and then a new person in the gym, I forgot her name, also uh, kind of run. She's a teacher. Ursula Stanley, Patrick who? Wally. To answer your question, I'd love to have a chance. I know Ursula Stanley, I think she'd be good. All know. you have to do is just say if you want to, uh, if the board has any thoughts on this, no, okay, no. not our, not our game, not our, our thought time. Okay. Uh, and I have another correspondence thing. I'm sorry to bring it up. Okay. Uh, Penny Dallin has been writing and asking what the board is going to do about following up on the Robert Bowers trash issue on QT every 12. We sent Mr. Bowers a letter and it's still a mess. I looked, I looked at it the other day. Vermont Community Land Trust, whoever owns the land underneath his mobile home, I heard from neither. So we said this is this is the place on Route 12, which is just Oh, oh, Backhoe oh, blocking the driveway, they got junk all over the yep, place. Yep. And we sent him a letter saying, yep. Clean it up. Clean it up, or else. Well, now it's time for the or else because nothing's happened. So what, what, well, they did move, they did move some of the stuff around. They did they, move some of the stuff around, but Penny's argument is that it is still getting, it's still it's creeping into the state where we also send a copy of the end of the letter to the state. I think we should send Penny down there and talk to him. I think that's a good idea. So could you hire Bulldog to remove the stuff and then bill him? No. No, we can find him. You can love him. Yeah. Oh, like well, how about if we had the lawyer? Was this letter sent by Rob? No, it was sent by us. We could send it to him before and ask for the job. Okay, so maybe we should have Rob write a letter and say it's fine. I mean, you know, we have a terrible reputation that we don't enforce anything. We no, I think we should. No, I agree. I, I think we should. I think we should start the fine process. So what we're doing. But I think we should let and make sure that. that make sure that the landowner knows that this fine right. is then. Community so, land trust. About yeah. yeah. So do you yeah. want to actually start imposing the fines, or do you want it to have a? I think you have to notify them. Letter? Don't you have to? Don't you have to first notify them when they say you don't have this fine? We've already notified them. Okay. That you would start the fine. Is that the, what does it say in the letter? Yeah. What, what does it say in the ordinance? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, what I'd have the lawyer write the letter saying by give them 15 yeah, days right. and then say another, effective another this day. Yeah, like, get a lawyer letter. Yeah. Well, what if the guy thinks he's done a hell of a job? Do you have to go back and say it's terrible again? Because because he, he did. He did. I went by there a couple of times and they did move yeah. stuff. Well, they, they moved the stuff that was literally in the room. The nose was in the room. Well, I mean, <laughs> they fired up that back and would drag it back. Didn't right. they, didn't they didn't remove have any of it. I that were actually on the roadway because, yeah. because the back hoe was taking the space in the driveway. Yeah, they did. They got to get oh, rid so of they have to get it right off their property? Well, we, we, have, a, we have a junk ordinance. They can't, they can't have a place of. We sent it to right. him on, we got to read our ordinance. We sent it to him on May 5th, and it said that we cited the ordinance in the letter. Um, it said, upon receiving written notice from the select board, the owner of any junk discovered in violation of Article 2 shall remove from view, blah, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Failure to do so within 30 days will merit a violation ticket. And moreover, under 24 BSA 912, blah, 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 a civil penalty of not more than $50 per violation. I don't know what that means. May be imposed for violating this ordinance. Each day that the violation continues shall constitute a separate violation of this ordinance. I can't believe that it's the land trust that owns that. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's not the land trust. No, no, no. no. I, I no. know, but the one with all the money. I, mean, I can't believe that they, that, they, that they allow that to be like that. Well, that's they the property. property. That. That's I exactly the point. You have to lean on them because they'll get them to clean it so up. So they'll, 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 or they'll close. boot them out of there. They'll close. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, they leaned on him the last time he did this. So that's what we have to but do. But it's now Johnson. It's now what? Now they don't have a, I don't know if they have any ED yet, do they? I don't know. It sounds like there's a, if there's a gap there. Well, they closed here. Like what do you, they don't have a what? An ex executive, executive director. director. Down the street? Right. Gotcha. Down street housing. They used yeah. to be community yeah. land trust. Like what we're going so to do you want me to ask Rob to send a letter? Yes. Yes. And tell him that, you know. With a short fuse. Yeah. Okay. Letter with a short fuse. Send him a send him a copy of the letter we sent and said yeah. say take the next step whatever it is and then also make sure that he sends it to whatever the community land trust successor organization yeah. is. 
So it's each, each piece of trash a violation? Each day. Each day. Each day. Well, no, but it says each, each violation. So I think I'll pay it. Yes, probably not. Okay, they never so pay it. We're pretty lucky if we get it for every day since May. Forever. I just wanted to clean up the damn mess. I don't want to find anybody. Um, we probably have no money to clean up the damn mess. They do. Downstreet. Sure. They're getting on the agenda. I think they have a problem. Limbo. Limbo. All right, so that's it. Okay. Are we meeting next? You guys Did you guys all now. sign the orders? Yeah. Yeah. I can't be next Tuesday. I'm out of town. No, that's, I didn't mean next Tuesday. Our next schedule. Next Tuesday is August 3rd. Do you want to cancel? We don't really have that much going on. We've had a hot summer. We don't have the DCA here. Well, well, you mean, yeah. mean since April, we've had a meeting virtually every Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way too. So, what do you want to do, board? Do you want to uh, just set up a provision for signing orders so that Rita doesn't go nuts? Yeah, I, I'll be around, but I, I would love that. Yeah. We can rest up so you can go to the uh, greater show. So, there you go. so you guys are going to cancel this cancel this meeting, but we should have orders available on the third for signature. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Yep. Okay. I will not be here. So what do we need? Three? We need three of us to yeah, sign. Yeah, three. I'm in, you want to, I'm in town. I'm in deal with these orders. I we did. did. Oh, we did. Yeah. Who didn't? You. No, oh, I did. Oh, I did. There's no Steve. I thought I signed. No Steve tonight. Must, there must have been two things. I signed one. There, I yeah. signed the other. Okay. okay. All right. I'm and sorry. Just trying to make sure they're in the straight here. Great. That's Thank awesome. You. Okay. We're good. Um, I Great also catch. need from you, Peter, the form for Bonnie Batchelder that filled out. Do you remember that broad form? Oh, my favorite form. Yeah. Okay. Will you send it to me? Again? I did send it to you again. Huh. Come on. Oh, yes, I'll look for it again. Oh, good. And this wasn't the, this is to no, say no, that was something that, else. Was the, 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 yeah. oh, the other thing was, was something know, else. Know, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes. I'll, 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 Absolutely. I'm sorry. Are we done? I believe we are adjourned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Recording stopped. I, I told people. Uh, no, in January.